Good morning. morning. Welcome to worship on this Lord's Day. We're glad to see you here on a humid morning. If you're visiting with us online and worshiping with us, we are glad to see you here and praise God that we're able to worship together through different ways, through in-person and online. We uh, want to remind you that next week is our church picnic at Yemen Park. Services will start at 11, and then we'll picnic together. You bring a covered dish and some lawn chairs and uh, enjoy. Uh, hopefully the weather will cooperate with us. There is a uh, chicken barbecue and bake sale at Christ Community Church. We just received this announcement on August 28th, next Saturday from 11 o'clock on. And it's to benefit the Ethiopian Partnership, helping Ethiopian children go to school. That's a project of the Presbytery of Susquehanna Valley. And it was part of the group that helped organize the mass collection that was sent, were mass boxes of masks were sent over to Ethiopia. In addition, we have some challenging news, and that is that the pumpkin pie making has been canceled. I've had a last minute problem in getting pumpkin pie, pumpkin for the pies, and so we will not be making them this coming week, and we hope that soon pumpkin will become available. Who would, who would guess that we have a national shortage of pumpkin? Um, but that's what it is, and I'm still planning to have a drive through on the 2nd of October if we can get the pumpkin. So if you're still willing to help and uh, let Nancy Hatch know so she can keep you in the loop of when we're able to get pumpkin and make the pies. All right, there are other announcements to share this morning. Peace of Christ be with you. Please join me in the call to worship. The living God has sent the living bread from heaven to fill our hearts with strength. In the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Prayer for the day. Let us pray. God, our strength, you have brought us into your holy place through Christ, who has the words of eternal life. As you made us alive by his flesh and blood, cause us to boldly witness to the gospel, welcome the stranger, and pursue peace, standing through the struggles of our times. Amen.
may be seated. Let us come now to confess our sins to the one whose eyes are opened day and night, the one who heeds our cries, the one who listens to our prayers. Join me in the unison prayer of confession. Watchful God, you know our plight. Upset, we have not believed your words. Complaining, we have betrayed your love. We are often weak, estranged, wandering, and lost. Seeking to stand in our own strength, we fall. Strangers to your holiness, we wander. Defenseless against evil within and without, we are lost. Shine your light in our darkness and guide us back to our place in you. Join me in silent prayer. The living God hears our cries and forgives our sins. The Lord God is a sun and shield bestowing favor and honor through Christ, the bread of heaven, who brings us back to God and gives us strength. Amen. Time for our children's message with Carol Foster for our kids here and watching at home. We're just going to have her go up one aisle and down the other, and that will be our children's message. <laughs> Good morning, Rosalie. How are you? How are you this morning? That walking's getting better every week. Are you running away from Mommy yet? Oh, yes? <laughs> well. I'm wondering, has, has Wyatt noticed any night sounds recently that haven't been there? The crickets. How many of you have been noticing crickets at night? Okay, good for you. There's a few of you that need to get outside your house tonight. Because <laughs> they're there and they're getting louder. They love this warm weather. Yeah, when they go away, so will, because the warm weather's gone away. It's one of my favorite sounds. Do you ever stop and think what your favorite sound is? Emily, do you have a favorite sound? I love the Say it again. The Loons. That reminds me of, what's the movie? where the, the woman says, the loons, the loons, what is that? On Golden Pond. On Golden Pond, yes, yes. <laughs> favorite sound, just call them out. What are, what's your favorite sound? Dolphins. Say it again. Dolphins. Dolphins, oh yeah, oh yeah. Waves on the beach. My cat. My cat. My cat. <laughs> Say it again, Janice. Children laughing. Children laughing. Birds. Birds. Dave, what's your favorite, one of your favorite sounds? I don't have any. Um, I don't know. Too Maybe many? the crow, the crows on the on the on the uh, on the cap on the courthouse. No, not really. <laughs> birds, bird sounds. When he said crows, do you think he was serious? <laughs> <laughs> Mama? 
Yeah, and you're one of my favorite sounds too, definitely. Jim, favorite sound? A babbling brook. A babbling brook. Just think of all the sounds that you love. It's a good way to do a little turn on your mood sometimes. I had to get outside last night to listen to those crickets. I just, I love the sound. And if you've never read Cricket in Times Square, highly recommend. Great book, great story. You can read it with anybody, maybe just a little bigger than Rosalie on up. It's a great story. A lot of countries, cultures, almost revere crickets. They say, have you ever eaten a cricket, Emily? And are they good? It wasn't my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me, did it taste like chicken? No, it was dried to taste like chicken. Like a potato chip, okay. Every time somebody says they had something and you haven't, they say, well, it tastes like chicken. So the universal taste, I guess. Uh, they say crickets have a lot of protein in them. So could be a, a food source, I don't know. Do you know that it's the males that make the singing sound? Not the females. So, you know, they'd say about women talking so much, well, I'll say, well, crickets, it's the males that do all the talking. But you know where their ears are? <laughs> We're okay, by the way. <laughs> their ears are little things behind their knees. Amazing, isn't it? Well, I just think crickets, they're one of my favorite sounds and flocks of geese, whether in the fall when they're heading south or in the, in the spring when they're heading back north. What do you think? Do you like them too, Rosalie? Yeah? <laughs> yeah. Early morning. Early morning. Well, what better time? <laughs> so your assignment is sometime this week, step outside your door after dark and listen, listen for the crickets. God gave us many beautiful sights in this world, but he also gave us many beautiful sounds. And the sounds of your voices are one of them. And of our bell players and our organ, lots, lots of beautiful sounds. <laughs> and children laughing, as grandma said. Let's have a prayer. Dear Lord God, how did you do it? How did you come up with all of these wonderful things? Sights and sounds, just absolutely amazing. Help us not to take them for granted, but to treasure them every day as we enjoy them. Thank you that little ones have pretty hard heads when they hit another surface. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Rosalie and Mommy. Bye-bye. <laughs> Carol reminded me that years ago, Barbara and I were camping in Canada along a lake, and the loons were there, and entertained us and one night one of the loons kept crying all night and finally Barbara said what is wrong with that bird and I just said he's loonly <laughs> and she still stayed married to me you know this is our time for sharing joys and concerns we invite you to pray for those who are on the prayer list and Others you may know who could, be, could use some support through prayer. Are there joys and concerns to share with this morning? Yes. Yes. 
60 years, yeah. Great. Yes, Tom. I just wanted to express on behalf of uh, my siblings and the extended family that how grateful we are for the uh, wonderful service that was put together by the church, you, Dave, and Paul, that, and uh, members of the choir with Sue, and also the ladies that put together the reception afterwards. In these times, it's very difficult to do, and it was a blessing for us and uh, an expression of the love that we all feel here for each other. So, uh, Mom would have been proud. Thanks, Tom. Thank other joys or concerns? Yes, Nancy. Been a summer for weather, hasn't it? Okay. I'm sorry, Audrey, I couldn't hear you. Oh, Audrey's sister in law will have surgery tomorrow. Okay. Let's pray. Oops. Yes. Yeah. Praise for prayers for Scott's dad who had eye surgery and is recovering. Let's pray together. Eternal and gracious God, as we gather this morning, there are many things that weigh upon our hearts. We have times of joy as we celebrate special times with other people, birthdays, anniversaries. We pray this morning knowing that there are those who are recovering from surgery or those who are facing surgery we know that COVID continues to infect people and that some people have long-term recovery from that COVID. And we know that others are uh, mourning the loss of a loved one. We pray that your spirit will continue to move through us and with us and embrace us, especially in those difficult times. We pray this morning for those who may be in harm's way with hurricane uh, as it comes up the coast, we pray that preparations will be sufficient and we pray that people will be protected. Lord our God, we also remember uh, the challenges in Afghanistan, the refugees, the turmoil, the challenges, the violence. And so we ask that your presence will be with those who have fled and those who remain behind. Gracious God, as a church, help us always to be sensitive to the needs of others, both in this community and throughout the world. Help us to reach out in a variety of ways, whether it be through financial support or uh, prayer encouragement or activism or seeking justice and peace, whatever path you lead us, Help us to be caring for those around us and in our world. All this we pray in the name of Jesus Christ who taught us to pray together by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. 
Amen. Our first lesson is Psalm 84. How lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord of hosts! My soul longs, indeed it faints, for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh sing for joy to the living God. Even the sparrow finds a home, and the swallow a nest for herself, where she may lay her young at your altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God. Happy are those who live in your house, ever singing your praise. Happy are those whose strength is in you, in whose heart are the highways to Zion. As they go through the valley of Baca, they make it a place of springs. The early rain also covers it with pools. They go from strength to strength. The God of gods will be seen in Zion. O Lord God of hosts, hear my prayer. Give ear, O God of Jacob. Behold our shield, O God. Look on the face of your anointed. For a day in your courts is better than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than live in the tents of wickedness. For the Lord God is a sun and shield. He bestows favor and honor. No good thing does the Lord withhold from those who walk uprightly. O Lord of hosts, happy is everyone who trusts in you.
Hello, okay. Our second lesson comes from Exodus, the 15th chapter. Then Moses and the Israelites sang this song to the Lord. I will sing to the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. Horse and rider he has thrown into the sea. The Lord is my strength and my might, and he has become my salvation. This is my God, and I will praise him. My Father's God, and I will exalt him. The Lord is a warrior. The Lord is his name. Pharaoh's chariots and his army he cast into the sea. His picked officers were sunk in the Red Sea. The floods covered them. They went down into the depths like a stone. Your right hand, O Lord, glorious in power. Your right hand, O Lord, shattered the enemy. In the greatness of your majesty, you overthrew your adversaries. You sent out your fury. It consumed them like stubble. At the blast of your nostrils, the waters piled up. The floods stood up in a heap. The deep congealed in the heart of the sea. The enemy said, I will pursue, I will overtake, I will divide the spoil, my desire shall have its fill of them. I will draw my sword, my hand shall destroy them. You blew with your wind, the sea covered them. They sank like lead in the mighty waters. Who is like you, O Lord, among the gods? Who is like you, majestic in holiness, awesome in splendor? doing wonders. You stretched out your right hand, the earth swallowed them. In your steadfast love you led the people whom you redeemed. You guided them by your strength to your holy abode. The peoples heard, they trembled. Pang seized the inhabitants of Felicia. The chiefs of Edom were dismayed. Trembling seized the leaders of Moab. All the inhabitants of Canaan melted away. Terror and dread fell upon them. By the might of your arm, they became still as a stone. Until your people, O Lord, passed by. Until the people whom you acquired passed by. You brought them in and planted them on the mountain of your own possession. The place, O Lord, that you made your your abode. The sanctuary, O Lord, that your hands have established. The Lord will reign forever and ever. When the horses of Pharaoh with his chariots and his chariot drivers went into the sea, the Lord brought back the waters of the sea upon them. But the Israelites walked through the sea on dry ground. Then the prophet Miriam, Aaron's sister, took a tambourine in her hand, and all the women went out after her with tambourines and with dancing. And Miriam sang to them, Sing to the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. Horse and rider he has thrown into the sea. May God bless to our understanding this, the reading of God's word, and to God's name be all praise and glory, now and forever. Amen. Today I want to look at Miriam. Miriam, the sister of Moses and Aaron. Miriam, who was a leader of the Jewish people during their journey from Egypt through the wilderness to the promised land. The passage from Exodus that Jan and I just read to you this morning is called Miriam's Song. Some biblical scholars say that it's the oldest passage in the Old Testament. It's written in a form of Hebrew which seems to predate all other writings in the Old Testament. They conclude that Miriam's song was, like many songs of peoples, was passed along from generation to generation. Perhaps uh, because it tells of the destruction of Pharaoh's army as it chased the fleeing Hebrews as they left on their long journey to the Promised Land. And it's recorded there perhaps because the authors of Exodus had heard that song as as children and included it in this passage. Miriam is an important leader in the history of Israel. But for the most part, she remains in the background, perhaps because she was a woman 
and later writers of Exodus and Numbers downplayed the role of women. Perhaps she was overshadowed by her two brothers, Moses and Aaron. We see references to Miriam only four times in the Old Testament. She appears early in the book of Exodus as she saves the infant Moses, her brother, from death. As the biblical account reads, Pharaoh had decreed the death of all male Jewish babies to control the population of the slaved people. Moses' mother and his sister Miriam devise a plan to save his life. They put him in a basket, place him in the reeds along the riverbank where the Pharaoh's daughter came regularly to bathe. Moses is found and taken in by Pharaoh's daughter. Coming out of hiding, Miriam offers to obtain a nurse from the Hebrew people to care for the Pharaoh's daughter's new child, and naturally brings her own mother to nurse her son. Miriam, at a young age, demonstrates courage and ingenuity. Next, we see Miriam leading the Hebrew women in song and dance after their deliverance from Pharaoh's army. This is a short glimpse, but it tells us that she played an important role in the events that led up to Pharaoh's decision to release the people. And I don't doubt that she helped plan and organize the departure from Egypt, providing guidance, encouragement, comfort for the families as they gathered together their meager belongings and tried to plan for what lay ahead. Then in Numbers 12, we read of a conflict with Moses as she and Aaron challenge Moses as to why he would bring a non-Jewish wife into his household. It was a violation of Hebrew practice to bring someone in from the outside. And Moses had chosen a Cushite woman, supposedly at the direction of God. So Aaron and Miriam challenge Moses' authority. And the three of them are summoned by God to the tent of meeting. There God affirms the leadership of Moses and underscores the special relationship that God had with Moses that enabled God and Moses to speak face to face. For challenging Moses, Miriam is punished. A week she is plagued by a skin disease and banished from the camp. And it's interesting that there's no mention of a punishment towards Aaron. Probably demonstrates again the lower status given to women in that culture and in that time. The final reference to Miriam comes about halfway through the book of Numbers and well into the people's journey through the wilderness of Sinai. Miriam's death is recorded and she will never get to see the promised land. Neither will Aaron, nor will Moses be able to cross over but she's honored in a very special way. For the place where she dies is a waterless section of the desert. In recognition of Miriam, God causes a spring to bubble up in the desert. Water, life-giving water, marking the place of her death and honoring her life and her leadership. After the rain of the past few days, I'm not gonna say anything more about water this morning. But Miriam's leadership during this formative time in the history of Israel was crucial. She was part of an amazing team. Moses provided the overall leadership. He was the intercessor between God and God's people. He was the lawgiver, the interpreter of law, the judge, along with the 70 elders. He kept the people together and guided their path from slavery to nationhood. Aaron, Moses' older brother, was the communicator who often spoke eloquently for Moses. 
He was the leader of the Levi priests. He depended on Moses' strength. And as we know, Aaron failed in leadership when he allowed the golden calf to be created. And then the third was Miriam. Her name means prophetess or lady, which recognized her leader as a leader of the tribe. And the model of leadership employed by these three was unique for its time. Rulers of of the ancient world and even today lead by force of arms or military might. Moses, Miriam, and Aaron led by example. They served their people rather than ruled their people. They did what they believed God wanted rather than serving their own ends or bending to popular opinion. So when the Hebrew people were delivered from Pharaoh's army, it was Miriam who put their joy and praise for God into the form of song and dance. Later, it would be Miriam who, along with Aaron, would give voice to the people's grumbling when they complained about Moses' choice of a wife. And it would be Miriam who accepted the word of God by seeing that God had placed Moses in a special place. She knew when to question, and she knew when to accept without questioning. She was modeled thoughtful and wise, obedience and leadership. Miriam expressed many of the best qualities of energetic leadership, courage and ingenuity in a dangerous situation, loyalty to her family, love of music, storytelling, and dance, and intellectual inquiry into questions about authority and responsibility. Miriam's leadership, I think, was a model for the early Christian community. The Hebrew people, when they possessed the promised land, looked to powerful and strong leaders, military leaders like Joshua, great judges like Deborah, and eventually kings like Saul and David and Solomon, and even strong-willed prophets like Jeremiah and Isaiah and Ezekiel. But the leadership that Jesus demonstrated was very much in the model of Moses and Aaron and Miriam. This was the way of the early church, leadership by example, serving rather than ruling, doing what they believed God would want them to do rather than meeting their own needs and feeding their own egos. In the past few weeks, as flooding has indeed ravaged parts of our region and the country, We're hearing wonderful stories about people helping others and providing crucial leadership in times of danger, leading by example, giving sacrificial service, and employing gifts not for their own ends, but for the good of the community. We all have the opportunity to demonstrate this kind of leadership. We trust the diverse gifts God has given this congregation. And we can lead in visible ways and in ways that are often hid from public view. We can be leaders in big things and in small things, things that have consequence beyond ourselves and things that only impact ourselves and our relationships. We can demonstrate leadership in love and in service. And as we lead, we can do so firmly in the tradition of Miriam, Aaron, Moses, and Jesus. Amen. I invite you to join with me in the affirmation of faith as it's printed in the bulletin. We trust in God, whom Jesus called Abba, Father. In sovereign love, God created the world good and makes everyone equally in God's image, male and female, of every race and people to live as one community. But we rebel against God. We hide from our creator 
ignoring God's commandments, we violate the image of God in others and ourselves, accept lies as truth, exploit neighbor and nature, and threaten death to the planet and always our care. We deserve God's condemnation. Yet God acts with justice and mercy to redeem creation. In everlasting love, the God of Abraham and Sarah chose a covenant people to bless all families of the earth. Hearing their cry, God delivered the children of Israel from the house of bondage. Loving us still, God makes us heirs with Christ of the covenant, like a mother who will not forsake her nursing child, like a father who runs to welcome the prodigal home. God is faithful still. a shine in this land with the Father's glory blaze spirit blaze
upon you and give you peace.